Hello neighbor, Alicia Dolan here at Creating in My Corner. Thank you for stopping by for a Stampin' Sunday video. Tonight we are going to be working on a graduation card, but not the one you may have seen earlier. I wanted to try something new and create as we go. So if you are joining me tonight, we're going to be working with some uh, Knight of Navy cardstock, some basic white, and we're going to do our best to use the One Happy Family stamp set and see what we can come up with for a uh, congratulations graduation card. I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll get started. If you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube and you can give me a thumbs up and like this video if you like it or leave me a comment to let me know that you're watching. I appreciate those likes and comments. I'll turn the camera around and we will get started right away. Hold on just one moment. Maybe more than one moment. I'm struggling just a little bit to get my everything sorted out tonight. Hold on one second. I'm going to turn the camera around and we will get started right away. Hi, Tina. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so I think you can see my workspace pretty well and I will try to keep everything here in the center. So we're going to be working with this one happy family stamp set and uh, the one, the first stamp that I've chosen, this has a lot of different sayings. The one that I chose to work with first is celebrating you. It's this one right here. But I thought that a lot of these would be really good for graduation. There's I'm so proud of you. Keep up the good work. Celebrating you. Uh, lots of luck. Congratulations. Hey there, smarty pants. Uh, just be you. I, th I think a lot of these would work for graduation. So that's why I chose this one. And it's really versatile. So it has a lot of different things. So there's our first uh, thing that we're going to be working with. And then I wanted to use some of these beautiful shapes dies. Now, I haven't cut out all of these shapes yet, but as you can see, there's a really nice little hexagon, and these little diamonds are going to come in super handy. There's tiny triangles, and these kind of swirly frame shapes, which are really neat, and then there are some circles and a big swirly circle frame. So these two sets are what we're going to focus on tonight, but I did think that maybe we would need our playful alphabet dies. So I have those with me too, just in case that's what we end up going with. So first, I took a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock and I cut it at, uh, let's see, five and a half. So it's a regular A2 size card. So we've got five and a half this way and eight and a half this way. And then I turned it sideways and scored here at four and a quarter. For my next layer, I chose basic white and I thought I'd make that four by five and a quarter. And I am trying to watch for your comments as well as we go to see if you have any questions or you can always leave them and I can answer later. Um, especially if you're watching on YouTube much later. I cut a piece of Knight of Navy and this is, let's see. Looks like two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Because I thought it would go 
across this way. Pretty nice. And so what I wanted to do with this is something different. I'm gonna grab my, just one of my stamping sheets here. And this one, as you can see, is pretty stamped up. But I tend to use these little grid papers for a really long time. Here, we'll turn to the back side. And then hopefully you can see a little better what I'm stamping. So here was my idea. I thought that we could use our Versamark ink tonight. And do a little bit of embossing. So what I want to do is I'm going to ink up the stamp and I kind of wanted it to go all around like the little words. So I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to make a whole bunch of these. And I'm going to try to line them up, but not too perfectly. Now, if you notice that your Versamark ink is running out, you can get refills for this. And with this and with the Whisper White, well, I don't know if it's called Whisper White anymore, but the White Craft ink, you're going to want to keep a little plastic spoon in your crafting stash. And with that little plastic spoon, when you re-ink your Versamark or re-ink your white craft ink pad, you're going to take that little spoon and just smear the ink around. Because the, the ink that goes with it is a little bit thicker and it doesn't soak in quite as fast as a regular ink refill would. Okay, and there we have our first stamping. And like I said, I'm not sure exactly how this will work out. I did not test it ahead of time. So we are completely uh, working as we go tonight. This is a little tray that I've had for a long time for my um, embossing powders, but I don't always, I don't always use it. It's just nice to catch them. And I can't tell you that I know that we have it anymore. And then I'm going to get my white Stampin' Emboss powder. Now, if you have an embossing buddy, or uh, something to take the static out of your paper before you do this, that would be a good idea. I did not do that step because I don't have an embossing buddy. And I just learned the other day about a trick. You can use a used dryer sheet. And I haven't tried that yet. But sometimes when you're embossing, the powder will... Um, the powder will stick to static in the stamp that you don't want it to. So if you have the chance to get some of that static off of there, that is a good idea. So I'm just going to tap mine on here and you can see where that's sticking. And I'm going to pull it off to the side here, and I'm just going to flick it from the back side to try and get some of that extra embossing powder off. And then I'll, I'll vacuum later.
Oh, you use a plastic spoon too, Tina. It does work. Okay, so now I've got a few spots where my embossing powder stuck and I don't necessarily want it to be stuck there. So I have this little brush and I'm just gonna try and brush a few of those little spots and then I'll flick it again a little bit. And the reason I was doing it over the carpet, not over my paper is because embossing powder gets everywhere and it can make uh, kind of a big mess, especially if you're working on something later that you emboss in a different color. All right, this one, I don't think it's gonna come off of there. I'll try it a little more, but it looks like part of my word down here is gonna smudge and I guess I'm just gonna let it. And maybe we'll cover that up with something else, I don't know. Okay, so then we can take our piece of paper. This is just a regular piece of printer paper that I pour the embossing powder over so that I can get it back inside its little jar without too much trouble. But see how it kind of escaped a little bit over there. So I'm going to have to watch out for that and not get it on the rest of my card. Okay, so now I am going to get my embossing tool and I'm going to heat this up. Trying to see if I can. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this or not as the magic happens, but we'll see. My outlet is a little far away. I don't know if you can see that or not, but where it's heating up, the embossing powder is turning kind of a shiny white over on this side, and I'm gonna turn it around so I can get the rest of this side over here. You wanna be careful when you're doing this because the heat gun gets pretty hot, and you definitely don't wanna burn your fingers. And you keep your heat gun moving too while you're going. Okay, so now we have our little piece of paper and it says celebrating you. And so let's see, we're gonna layer this on top of here. And I did not get very far tonight in my designing. I meant to get a little bit farther than that, but I will show you what else I worked on today. Oh, a clothespin, that's a good idea. I have used tweezers before, um, but they get hot too. A clothespin would probably work much better. That's a good uh, That's a good tip right there. I used to lay it down on a, I had a big wooden cutting board and I just lay it on there and hold it with one of those wooden sticks but I don't have space to keep that much stuff. I mean, I do have the space, but I'm trying to cut back. 
<laughs> on how much space I take up. Okay, so there is that. And then we have another uh, little sentiment here that says congratulations. And I wanted to use that. So let me clean off my first stamp here. And I'm just using a little stamp and block tonight. I You could use your stamparatus for this, but um, I didn't feel like I needed to. So I just have a block here. This is block D. And this is one I keep right on my uh, little bench next to me because I use it all the time. This one and and I. So D and I are um, blocks that I use pretty frequently, I would say. The rest of them I leave up on the shelf. Okay, so let's see. We need a sentiment. And we need our, uh, our little hat. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment. Oh, I can feel that embossing powder got on my table. Hold on just a second because I know that that can affect my stamping. So I'm just gonna take this microfiber cloth and I'm gonna wipe it off real quick so that I don't have to worry about it getting all over. At least not on my mat. There's still a little bit up there in the corner, but I don't wanna move everything right now to get that out of the way. All right, so we're gonna use this congratulations and let's see, we're, let's look at our beautiful shapes dies and see if we have one that would fit. And I think that one will fit nicely. So let's use that and we can get our little diamonds out while we're at it. Let's see. Well, oh, that's not going to quite cover it. I think this one is a better size. I have little bits of uh, basic white and other kinds of cardstock all over my table today because I, if you guys have seen this weekend, I've really been doing a lot of stamping. So I, we didn't have any Saturday plans and so I spent my time uh, doing a lot of creating, which is super fun for me. So I I was really happy with it. Okay. And since I stamped my other part in white, I'm going to stamp this one in Night of the Navy. So there's my stamp, my ink. And I'm just going to stamp on here. Now, I'm stamping over top of my... This is a old Stampin' Up! mat that I had that I just used for measurements. But this is... Um, it, does, it does help me to have a flat surface because my table is one of those folding tables. And it's a little bit bumpy. The surface on it is a little bit bumpy. So we're going to stamp this here and what I really like about this oval is that it's not a perfect shape and so if I don't stamp my congratulations perfect it will still it will still fit in the shape and it won't look it won't look odd because the shape is odd so that makes it kind of easy get it through. Okay, so I'm going to sit these right here for just a second. And this, and I'm going to sit this on the side. And 
Here is my mini cut and emboss machine, and I am really starting to love this. So I did have to clean my plates off because I found they weren't rolling through as smoothly. So I must have gotten them dirty a little bit. So what we're gonna do is put our, okay, now this is the way I use it. This is not the way um, it says you're supposed to use it. So I use plate three, which is actually your embossing folder plate, and then plate two, which is a clear plate. And as you can see, this is the one that it cuts on. So I've used both sides of this plate but this plate is the one that goes on top. So I try to keep them always the same. I'm not really sure why, but just, <laughs> just because I like to have one that still looks kind of new and maybe one that's more used. Okay, so now our shape could go this way or this way. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go this way. Not for any specific reason other than I kind of like it like that. So we're going to go right there. And then I just put my top plate on and I try to press mine down and then press it in first until the handle turns and then I wheel it through. I found that that is the best process for me. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It may, it does make my my table wiggle a little bit and my camera too. Okay, so here is our sentiment, and I think that's gonna look pretty cool. Okay, and then next we're gonna cut out our little hat pieces, and I have some. Knight of Navy cardstock over here. I just need a little piece. So I'm gonna set that down. And then these are the little diamonds from the Beautiful Shapes die. So we're just gonna set those in there. And put our top plate down again. And we'll push it until it starts to turn. And then send it on through. Whoop. Okay. And so now we have two perfect little diamonds. So we're going to need those. And here's our scrap piece because there's still room for more little diamonds if we need them. I'm going to set these out of the way and I'm going to put these beautiful shapes back right away because I don't want them to get lost. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to set, I'm just setting them right next to me in case you're wondering. And this one. Okay, so here is what we have so far. So we've got our card base. We've got a little white layer. We've got our Celebrating You layer that we made. Now, if you did use your embossing buddy, you would probably find that all these little speckles in here, they probably wouldn't be there. So, you know what we will do is something a little bit different. Because we have those little speckles, let's take our, this is our Wink of Stella brush. And I've never tried this before, so hopefully this works. And what we're gonna do is take the tip of this brush and kind of splash it onto the card. And then hopefully we'll get more little speckles, but they'll look like they're supposed to be there. So let's see what happens. Oh, I do see some. Okay. Now, I've seen people do this with their Stampin' Blends. But I can't remember if I've ever seen anyone do it with 
the Wink of Stella brush. And probably not because it doesn't make, as I'm looking at it, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference in there. All right, so we're gonna put that back away and I'm just gonna give this a little wave and see if it's drying. All right, and we can set that to the side for a minute and then I wanna show you how I am gonna do these little hats. So we have two little diamonds and right here, I have a scrap of Old Navy, and this is a half inch strip. So I'm going to take my little hats, and I'm going to turn them upside down. Now, it doesn't matter which way you do them. I've just found that um, because the paper was, I don't know, this side down, the plate that goes on the bottom that has all those cut marks will make kind of a pattern on, on one side of the paper that you cut, whatever side is facing down. So I like to put that side at the back. If you really like that pattern that comes up because your plate is cut, then you could use the front side. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a little spot of glue on here. And I'm gonna take my little half inch strip and I'm gonna center it over the hat and just glue those pieces together. Now I'm gonna turn it over just to make sure that it's kind of even. If it's not perfectly even, it's probably gonna be fine. And I'll let that dry for a minute. <clears throat> And I'm gonna get a drink of water because my voice is a little crackly. Okay, now here are my snips and you just want a sharp pair of scissors. It doesn't matter what kind, what kind you use. And what we're gonna do is cut just a little arc here to make our hat. So we're just going to go and I'm going to turn my paper as I go. And there is one little hat. And then we can do the same thing with the other one. And this is not, this is not really something I made up, but I had seen uh, where other people paper pieced little hats together made out of different shapes and I thought I can use those beautiful shapes and they'll work just perfect for little hats. So we'll glue two together and I can't tell you why exactly I made two. We probably could have done just one but there were two diamonds in the in the set so I made two. All right, so we're going to cut again our little rounded shape. And we have two little graduation caps. So next, let's see, these ones are blue, so that's a little bit trickier. Uh, the last ones I made were black, and that worked out a tiny bit easier. Okay, so let's make, uh, these are the classic matte dots and we're, let's see, what color should we use? Maybe let's use gray. So we're gonna need these little dots. And then what I did before, was take some of this Simply Elegant trim. You could use any color, any color you want. And I used silver before, but I think I'm gonna use gold on this one. 
and we're going to unroll that a little bit. And what I did before was I just folded it over and tied a little knot. Oops. Hold on, I missed the loop. Let me try one more time. There we go. All right, and I didn't want my loop to be very long because these are pretty tiny little hats, right? So if we can pull it a little bit tight. And then what we're gonna do is Oh. <laughs> this gold thread does not like to sit still. It's, it definitely has a memory and it wants to go the way it wants to go. So what I'm going to do is fix it real quick. I'm going to grab one of my little glue dots here, mini glue dot. And tonight I'm just going to pick them up with my scissors because that's what I have right close to me. So we're going to pick up that little mini glue dot and I'm just going to stick it down in the center of that hat. And I'm going to lay my loop over top. See how it really wants to, it really wants to bend and go the other direction. And then to pick up my little dot, I am going to use my take your pick tool because I can trust that little squidgy end right here is going to pick it up and help me get it to where I need it to go. So when you use your take your pick tool, if you twist it a little bit, then a little more sticky stuff will come out the end. And we're going to grab one of these little gray dots. And I am just going to stick it right in the center of that loop. And then we can trim it off. I'm going to trim it right about here. And what I did with my other one was I kind of frayed the ends a little bit. And to do that, all you have to do is kind of untwist it. So there we go. There's one little hat. And then we gotta make one more. I wonder if we should make one silver and one gold. Let's just make them both gold for now. We'll, we won't overcomplicate our, our time together tonight. But I thought this was a pretty good way to make a little graduation card. And you could add one of these little hats to any any congratulations set and turn it into a graduation card. And I know we have lots of graduations coming up, right? And you wouldn't even have to emboss this. You could leave it with just the verse mark on there. Okay, so here we go again. We're gonna grab one more little glue dot. And we're gonna stick it in the center of that hat. Whoops. Maybe. My fingers must be a little bit dry tonight. And then we'll stick our little loop on there. And then another little gray dot. This one's a little bit taller, so I'm going to grab that one. So I kind of like them to stick up there a little bit. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to push that in a little bit just to make sure it's stuck on there. I don't want it falling off. Let's see. And we'll try to get it about the same length as the other one. Okay, so then... Uh -oh. That one then, I don't think it stuck quite as well as the first one did. I think my first gray dot got over the top a little bit. And then this one maybe didn't. Okay, and then I kind of want them... I kind of want them to be the same color as the hat. So let's try something. Let's 
I have right here a Knight of Navy Stampin' Right marker. And I'm just going to see if I can color these little dots so that they look blue instead of gray. And it looks like it's working. I don't know if it'll stay or not, but for now, it looks like it worked. I know there are some embellishments you can color and some you can't. So we're trying it with, without knowing if it works or not. So you can make these in any color. You could make them uh, burgundy or any any color you need. Okay, so now let's see where we're at. We've got our Celebrating You. We've got our little hats. And I think I'll put them, I think they can go up here, kind of in the corner. And our congratulations. Which side should it be on? Maybe up like this. And then let's take our little gold thread and we'll wrap it around and tie a little bow over here. One, two, ah! <laughs> That's what happens when you're not paying attention to what's going on, I guess. Okay, so we're going to go right over left, and there's our little knot, and we'll pull up a bow, go around, and through. There we go. Now that we've got that kind of where we want it, we'll just tighten it up. And this is going to flat. I didn't really pull those as tight as it looks, so that's going to flatten right out once I get it to where it needs to be. Okay, so there's our little gold thread. All right, let's put this together. And so we're gonna turn our piece of basic white over. I'm not sure that blue is staying on those little gray dots, but I know I've seen people color some of the things before. I think they color the pearls. But I'm not, I can't remember for sure. Okay, so this is going to go right on the center front of our card. And we could have embossed this too. I just didn't, I just didn't want to use too many different products tonight. Okay, so there is that. I forgot to fold that in half earlier. So let's take our bone folder and we'll make that a nice crease. So there is our card base. Then we'll add some Stampin' Dimensionals to this. So let's put one in each corner. And then I'm going to get one in the middle, pair two. Okay, and then we can line that up. And I don't want to put it too close to the top because that's where I'm going to put those little hats. Hold on. Let's use our grid paper since we have it. And I'm just lining it up along the bottom line. And then I can line this up. So that I get it pretty straight across there. Let's see if we can get this little bow. It may not turn the other direction because of the way the thread is going. There we go. All right, 
and let's put our little hats on. And we'll put one flat and then we'll pop one up. Oh, the white ribbon. I just saw somebody color the white ribbon the other day and it looked so cool. Okay, so here's one little flat hat. I feel like I have too, too much going on right here, but we're going to, it's okay. We're going to go with it. It's going to be fine. Maybe I'll put the other, oh, see, it did, it smudged. Because I touched that little um, thing right there. Hmm. Okay, well. I'm going to wipe it off because I don't want it to smudge anymore. And this is just a little cotton, little cotton thing I had over here. All right, so they're going to be gray. They're not going to be blue, but that's okay. I wonder if I can move that. No, nope, it's already stuck down there. Well, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. And here's the other little hat. I'm going to put it on this other side. Since I feel like there's already a lot on that, on that side there. And then we'll put this right here, I think. So we need a small dimensional at the top. Then we can put one kind of along the bottom on each side. So three little dimensionals. Oh, Night of Navy and Polish Pink. I haven't tried them together, but that does sound, it does sound really nice. Wait till you see. I don't know if you've been watching my uh, stuff lately, but I'm going to show you the cards that I made today that are going to be for my card class next month. So I was supposed to have a card class this month. It was supposed to be the first one of the year. But I could not, for the life of me, get, I couldn't get my <laughs> affairs in order. Let's put it that way. I couldn't get it together. So I have created a card class for next month, and I've already got all the cards ready. And I will show you those in a minute. So here is our finished card, and I would add to the inside a piece of white that's four by five and a quarter. That's what I usually do with, especially with cards that are a dark color so that they're easier to write on because you want people to see whatever message that you, you see all oh, the butterflies. I, they're really cool. <clears throat> um, and soon I'm going to show you guys how to make them. I will show you today if you if you can see. But they'll take they take a little more time. So All right, there is our card for today. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to if you want to stick around for just a few minutes, I'm going to show you the cards that I have for my next month class and I will show you my butterflies. So these are little butterflies that I made using the, hold on, I can tell you what stamp set, the Butterfly Brilliance dies, uh, Butterfly, Butterfly Brilliance stamp set and Butterfly dies. So these little butterflies are pop-up butterflies and they will fold flat when you put the card in the envelope but they'll spring right back up so you can see that they don't lay flat at all and this paper underneath here is the happiness paper one of the back sides of a sheet of happiness paper so these top little parts are vellum 
and they're uh, they're embossed with black embossing powder. But to make them pop up underneath here is a window sheet. So you can take, let me show you the window sheet that I made. Now window sheets come in a 12 by 12. And so what I did was I watched a video by, uh, I can't remember her name right now, but she was showing how to do some pop-up butterflies. So you take a window sheet. I will, I will add her name in the description once I, <clears throat> I'll have to look it up. So you take the window sheet, you score it, and then you can cut it. So you, and along this edge, this is uh, the red tape that we used to have called sticky strip. But if I were to, I ran out of that. So if I were to use it again, I wanted to use it up on my test butterflies. So you could use tear and tape, or you could use a thin strip of the uh, new adhesive sticky sheets. So what you do is you cut a little piece, and if you can see in here, let's see, I'm trying to see if you can see. You just glue it down so that that this part sticks to the butterfly and then this part sticks up. So it holds those wings up by memory. So those are really cool. And I will make a card soon with them, but I just haven't gotten that done yet. Let me show you the cards for my class. So we have, <clears throat> this is the one that I just made today. This is a little card to say hello. This is using the Painted Poppy set, which is one of my favorites. And the inside, I didn't stamp on this one. But here's the envelope that matches. So thank you, Tina. I, I really like that one too. So then we have a birthday card. And this is, again, made with some vellum. And I don't know if you can see, but I added some Wink of Stella, too, on these, on these poppies. And I really love it. So there's the inside. And then I stamped the envelope to match. So there's two. And then here is the third one. This is another graduation card that I worked on over the weekend. And then it says, congratulations on the inside. And this one, I just stamped a little bit of that. This kind of smudgy mark to match. I thought that looked kind of cool. And you could, you could give that to anyone. It could be feminine or masculine, either way. And then I made two different options for the last one. So this one could be a Father's Day card. And then I made a second option that could be a birthday card. So I thought those were really cool. And then I put this on the front of the card. Love this guy. So for that class, that's coming up uh, June 9th and 10th. So you can do during the morning on June 9th, which is a Thursday, or during the evening on June 10th. And I'll have room for about six people. And if you come to that class, I'll have all of the things die cut that I can die cut ahead of time. So you'll be able to finish all your cards while you're here. You'll just have to choose uh, for this one, whether you want Father's Day or Happy Birthday. And you can choose a different sentiment if you want, but I'll have all the pieces cut for you. And then all you have to do is stamp and put them together. Now, some things like this little happy birthday, you'll want to stamp that before you, you have your circle cut out. 
And so I will, um, if you want to come to the class, I will help you die cut those if you need to cut them while you're here, or you can try it yourself, either way. So I wanted to show you those. And then these, I know I already posted, but they're so pretty. I, I feel like you, can, you can't see them enough. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but that's how I feel about it. So there's this one that says, relax and enjoy your day. And then this, which is so cool. This is a, a fun fold. So it opens up here and then it opens up here. But you guys, this on the Horizon Suite, that is my absolute favorite. So um, if you want to get that, you should order that before the end of June because then it will be gone. And you're not going to want to miss out on this paper or these dies or the stamp set. It's really, uh, it's really one of my favorites. So, and I do have, uh, I do have the link to the first class that I did using that set. And that's only $4.99. So if you want access to that first class, you get uh, the PDF tutorial and you get the link to my YouTube video, uh, which is only for only for the people who paid for it. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that you are inspired to go make some graduation cards. I'm looking forward to seeing what you post and I will see you later on Facebook or on YouTube. Thanks for joining me today. Happy stamping, everyone.